And you can just use any of that before time content because that was tasty. <laughs> Oh, no. no. Once we snap, that that's that's where I start. Oh, I forgot. That you was think the I have? You think I edits. do things like creatively? Okay. Well, uh, then allow me to give you a nice entry point here. This episode of the Disinformed Podcast is brought to you in part by genital gangrene. Genital gangrene. You don't know what you got till it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> That is the and best pre-roll ad I've ever heard. Speaking of things that I didn't miss, Michael's presenting a topic today, and I guess we'll have to recover later. <laughs> Happy holidays, you fuckers. I was going to uh, put horns behind the intro music to, you know, satisfy Shane's needs to have, you know, a more jovial sounding intro. Uh, when? But... In 2024? <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> Fuck, but I side feel like... project number nine. <laughs> I feel like we'll just need to, uh, I feel like we just need to have Michael... Uh, not have anything jovial behind his voice. I mean, he practically doesn't have any life in his eyes anymore, so I mean, if we take him down any further, he's just going to be Courtney. Uh, Trust fall! True. true. <laughs> true. <laughs> Cl- cloth honger. Trust fall! Yeah, you, you can get those removed if you see the, a decent enough surgeon. You think I have the medical insurance to afford that? Yes. <laughs> yeah. no. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Probably yeah. true. <laughs> I hear that Howie's is really great about that. And they put garlic on their crust. They do. They put garlic on wounds, too. Yeah, I mean, if you give that to, like, a hungry enough hobo, they'll just gnaw that cloth hunger right off of you with enough garlic butter. I just... <laughs> I just think like if that's the like how far they would go, then Hungry Howie's employees probably also have like little cyanide teeth, you know, like the little like one tooth, but instead <laughs> like of like like actual Lado Atreides, yeah, yeah. But instead of cyanide, it's like the the different flavors of their crust. <laughs> <laughs> My cyanide pill is ranch flavored. Ugh. Mm. <laughs> you just get a blast of salty ranch before you die. <laughs> Remember the ranch tooth. <laughs> no, but you don't die. It's just more of a bit of just you're crunching down when you need extra seasoning. <laughs> Here's the question. <laughs> if it's a ranch tooth, did it come from the Hidden Valley? Ah. No. Yeah, I, there, I, I, there we're not that there. fancy. That's 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 I, fancy it ranch. A, it's it's a joke, Michael. It wasn't <laughs> literal. No, no, no. I I don't I don't believe it. Did uh, you you hear, don't believe much of anything. So put did a you hear that Hidden down, Valley has a recipe out for ranch eggnog this year? That is bullshit. That's not bullshit. I, <laughs> I don't believe it. Who in their right fucking mind would drink such a concoction? Michael. Michael. I would not. <laughs> ranch no. I'm, uh, well, okay, I would do it for the... I would do it for the... Uh, what TikTok? Is, what, what do the kids say nowadays? Do it for the TikTok or something like that? Uh, well... Plus for the Vine back in the day. No, I, think I know, it's called, I almost uh, said that, and I'm like, no, nah, I gotta be more topical here's here. Here's the thing. Ranch Nog sounds like something that you need to see, like, a sex therapist about. <laughs> if if we made it, if we made it together as a team, would you drink it? I've already crossed the streams with you once before. I don't feel the need to cap that off. Oh, I met further. Michael. I met Michael. Would he drink? Oh, I see. You want to induct him into the Hall of Fame? Yeah, because I've seen him look over his his shoulder all sexily with a with a butt. You know, mm. Mothman. <laughs> now I want to watch. She's him. not kidding. Do you want to hear what's in it? He's looking it up I, right I now. I looked he, it up. There, there, demon it, it's semen. It's $50 for a ranch eggnog kit. Would you please back the <laughs> fuck off of your microphone? I'm sorry. Because my eardrums are not going to survive you doing a goddamn like uh, automobile insurance ad for the entirety of the night. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just so... He's just yeah, so Michael, worked up. you know what he likes. And it's You're goddamn yelling. right. <laughs> so Man, so we're going to have a decent discussion tonight about Ranch dressing that everybody Ranch loves. Nog. Ranch Do you want to ASMR intro our show? Mm-hmm. <laughs> God, please no. Thank you all for being here for another stellar installment of the Disinformed Podcast. And I am Shane. Uh, I am John. <laughs> Guys, we're losing followers. <laughs> All two of them. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm Michael, but I, I, I gave up on the bit. I'm Courtney. Michael is. And Michael completed anything, <laughs> yes. as we know, so he couldn't sustain the bit. 
much like he cannot sustain his college career or his future matrimony or really his parenting duties. Michael is essentially only good for fucking things up. And based on that, welcome True. to another edition of Michael Presents Something That We May or May Not Care About. Oh, you'll care about this at the end of the episode. Is it I think I'm going to be upset. <laughs> I genuinely uh, wake up every day feeling that way. I'm going to be upset. I I just wake <laughs> up and, and I'm already disappointed with myself. <laughs> can you well, uh, at least explain wh- why we're here? I don't know. Can you? No. That's true. <laughs> I almost said that's your job, but I'm like, no, no, no. You could do it. I can't. I, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, well, this has been the the last installment of the Disinformed Podcast. Eight minutes in. Thank you. you. It's you been can. a wonderful three <laughs> goddamn eternities, and I, I look forward to even more with more talented people. Thank uh, you, Wayne. Yeah, I feel like we'll really nail it the next time. Yes. So, so why are you doing a weather correspondence? <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's raining frogs here on the interstate in New Jersey. I've never seen something like this since a biblical plague was brought down by Noah. Yeah, Mother Nature, yeah, she's really fucking pissed off right now. Yeah. <laughs> Rainstorms are a very fickle mistress, Hal. Back to you. I am just a skeleton. I didn't play it shit. <laughs> I'm just showing the clips where the bodies fly out. Okay. Uh, for those of you who are blissfully uninitiated with this show, you have our humblest apologies that you get to sit through this rigmarole. But uh, what we typically do here is we delve into random esoteric topics, and Michael attempts to mealy mouth his way through them. Then we will lie occasionally as well. Some of that is inconsequential, considering how bored you are likely to be. However, uh, we do not let you leave here misinformed, friends. I assure you, we will have a little denouement at the end of the episode where Michael will tell you all of the lovely lies that he has conscripted, consigned, and put away on layaway. Rain check? Trust fall. Claw yeah, is this, hunger. Is this the Christmas episode? Is this really what we're doing, Michael? You know what? It, it might as well is be. Is this how you celebrate? <laughs> no, this is not how I celebrate Christmas. I celebrate <laughs> with eight maids of milking. Ooh. And I'm one of them. Lactation <laughs> fetish? Anyone? Yeah. Anyway. I know you got a mommy thing, but let's not discuss it on the show any further. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be incriminated. Uh, make sure Michael's in his ditties before we get started, because he might make a doo-doo. I am not die-die. wearing pants, so whatever happens, happens. Hand check. And <laughs> our front and center... Anyway, there are six lies. Uh, I'm going to start this episode, which I've titled uh, Feeging. I probably am pronouncing that wrong, but I don't care. Feeging, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Eel. Uh, By saying that a good chunk of this episode has a trigger warning for animal abuse. Uh... Uh, I didn't realize that we were doing the rundown of your previous relationships. Okay. I, I, I'm prepared. I am an animal. Rar. XD. Uh, 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 <laughs> and then the second half is definitely not safe for work, as it is, as it is very naughty. Um, you've been like warned. Like a pine? Uh, yes. It's Got very wood. naughty. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. a whole branch. It's actually a whole tree. Um, oh, let's we're go. back to Stanford again. Good. Yeah, I, I did this is actually the, time. the Stanford Tree uh, 2 Electric Boogaloo. Feeling let's like go, it. Let's go back in time, because I like setting up episodes like this, to probably around the 16th century, maybe earlier. Oh. Add some, yeah, thank you for the Gregorian music chant. Um, Appreciate it. Set the scene here. You're listening to that because that always is playing in the background. You are an English horse seller, as in you sell horses. (laughs) Yes, nay. Uh, And you are having a very shitty time of it lately. All of your horses that you're trying to sell are a bit on the older side, a bit banged up and somewhat worse for wear. How were they banged? You don't want to know. Since you're the 16th century equivalent of a used car salesman, 
you're going to look for ways to spruce up these horses, uh, making them look almost brand new. But how? It's not like you can simply give them a spit shine. You could. And uh, bang out some dents or anything like that. It's it's pretty hard to do that. <laughs> not with that um, attitude. <laughs> not going to stop me from trying. But there is a way to make the horse look younger. If the horse was carrying its tail high, that is, if the horse's tail was erect, their words, not mine, then it would look less old, like how us humans standing up straight look less beaten down by life than if we were hunched over. That's really ableist of you, Michael. Yeah. I should have given a trigger warning for ableist words. I, I, you I might as well just trigger the whole episode. <laughs> I, I pretty much did. The first half is animal abuse. The second half is not safe for work. That is very naughty. But are we going to talk about Roy Rogers as well as Trigger? Um, no, that's that's next week. This is this is a ten part series, by the way. Just so oh, you guys God. know. Oh God. Good. Um, each 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 one is a is a century in time, so to speak. Um, and then in the later half, we start doing about. I, I I'm gesturing with my hands, just so everyone just listening can know that I'm just flailing around like I'm in the middle of a stroke or or or, or a seizure or both at the same time. <laughs> So, additionally, if the horse was pacing around instead of just standing there, it would look a lot more livelier, okay? But how do you do that? How do you make the horse's tail look more erect and it to look more lively by pacing around? With your mouth? Well, (laughs) below the tail is the horse's ass, okay? (gasps) Claw fonger. Oh, shit. (laughs) What if something was inserted into this ass... To make the horse keep its tail up, and that something made the horse so uncomfortable that it thrashed about, making it look like a young buck ready to mount the world. But what? You sit there thinking, Michael. You're trying to get a PhD. (laughs) Yeah, and as you can tell, I'm not succeeding in it. So you sit there thinking, you know, imitating Winnie the Pooh, banging your head, saying, "Think, think, think." Just then, you notice something wiggle in the corner of your eye. There's an eel there, writhing on the ground, placed there by divine providence, as you will. Uh, You thank the Lord for his divine wisdom and promptly shove the poor eel up the ass of the closest available horse. And wouldn't you believe it? That horse doesn't look a day over six. You have just come across the first half of today's topic, the practice of fagging. Mary Chrysler! (laughs) Happy Christmas. Mary, yeah. <laughs> That's disturbing. You're a sick, yes. sick man. Michael, why did he, why? <laughs> why? Michael, why? Because I, I am an eccentric fellow and things just, also. I can't say tickle my fancy because that makes but it sound a lot worse. But can't we just go back to like furries or something? Like why, why we got to go eel Oh, it, it gets, it gets stuff. there. It, it, it gets there. It gets there. Okay. Don't worry about it. All right. Okay. Um, before there's you... a Led Zeppelin story in here somewhere. I'm. I don't even want to know. Um, before you say anything else, yes, this is a widely known practice, but barely documented for some reason, uh, of spicing up a horse by sticking an eel up there. Um, now I couldn't find a record of what type of eel was used because there are multiple species of eel. And we'll get into why that's important in a moment. Um, How about the screaming eel? What? <laughs> what? I, okay, not a lot of Princess Bride fans on the call. I love Got it. it. Uh, I've seen it at least. But there are three species of eel native to English waters. The conger eel is the more common and smaller size with a minimum size of 36 inches. So I'm only really explaining these eels so you can visualize the size of these eels. So like when it's fully inside of a horse, where does it stop? Three feet long, this eel is, and weighs about 5 to 25 pounds. Thank you, Uh, Master Yoda. Keep in mind I said minimum size. Uh, The largest, um, the official... According to the record, the show notes, which I have like over 20 um, Yay. sources because I delved deep into this topic. The official largest conger, conger eel found off the UK coast weighed 68 and a half pounds. 
And another one found in 2015 was seven feet long and weighed 133 pounds after being gutted. So it wasn't official for some reason. Uh, the second eel is the critically endangered silver eel, which can grow up to five feet in length and weigh about 20 pounds. Gilbert Gottfried. Uh, yes. And the third eel is the eel least likely to be used. At least I sure hope it was. Oh, it's the economy class. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's the well-known electric eel. Uh, which grows to about eight feet in length and 44 pounds in weight. It's All electric. the electric boogaloo jokes, and you didn't wait for the was, electric eel. I was going to say, is no. electric eel bullshit? You're right. It is bullshit. I'm, yeah, yeah, it's bullshit. Um, there's only two uh, eels native to in- uh, England, and it was the first two. Um, <laughs> the electric eel surprisingly isn't classified as an eel. It's actually a type of carp or catfish, which I thought was bizarre. Uh, second, it is native to South America, not England. But that just sounds like a, it's it's already something up this horse's ass, and it's going to shock it, too. That just sounds, like, terrible. I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt on this, because this is the most esoteric topic of a, in a good long <laughs> while, I would say. And I feel like we're all trying to shit on you aggressively for it. But I mean, I just it. shit on Michael in general. <laughs> I mean, that's to be expected. I, I am the, uh, what is, the trope is called butt monkey, and it, that is a trope. You are um, a rainbow butt monkey, yes. I, that, I am. I am the disinformed rainbow butt monkey. And that you was, can clip uh, that. You know, by the way, that you was Finger Eleven's first name, strangely enough. Rainbow well, butt monkey? Yes, they released an album under the title of Rainbow Butt Monkey. I don't think you've ever told me that. Huh. That is for real a thing. <laughs> I have that CD. That that's fascinating. I actually that that's a really good band name. I like that because it's your, your taste name. makes so much yeah. more sense. <laughs> uh, so as I mentioned earlier, this practice was difficult to find evidence of, in part because it was so common in England at the time, and is still an issue even today. So when something is so commonplace, it's not written about as much because if everyone already knows, then why bother recording it, right? Okay. Uh, so it is still an issue today, um, albeit in a slightly, in a different, slightly less, slightly air quotes, less reprehensible form. Um, before we look at today's issue with horses and things going up their asses, uh, we should look in the past. So evidence for eels up the arse, because I have no sense of comedy. Where Um, did you get this? Like what, where did this idea come from for you? So it was actually a podcast that I listened to uh, that talks about a lot of random shit. Um, and then Literally. one day, uh, it's actually the podcast that I've mentioned before, Behind the Bastards, mm-hmm. um, that, okay. I, I, that honestly, I get a lot of my ideas from them because I am not original or creative in <laughs> any way, shape, or form. Uh, and they did an episode on uh, feging, faging, whatever, faguing. Um, this is going to be another, uh, homeopathy or homeopathy, uh, episode, just so you know. Oh, good. <laughs> um, but Can yes. I also just advise for any future transactions on this show here that we just avoid referring people to a better version of this show. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a good business practice, Michael, just so I can clarify. Oh, you like Hungry Howies? I mean, you should try, you should try Pizza Hut. Yeah. I thought for a second you were going to say Little Caesars, and I was like, whoa. They do, in fact, have liquid cheese. I would say probably <laughs> Little Caesars, then Hungry Howie's. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You say that in front of my owner. He's the, Them's fighting words. He'll take you out back. To, of, <laughs> of his trailer? And he'll fake you. Yeah. Oh, whew. no, he'll ginger you. Um, anyway. Like so, the professor and Mary Ann. What? Anyway, that's a spoiler for later. Uh, one poet, uh... Edward Ward... In his 1700 poem, A Song Upon Dancing, wrote that dancers skip with nimble force as eels in the belly of a horse, which jockeys use each market day to make them dance, as people say. Now, you classic English lit folks out there might recognize this next guy, a fellow by the name of John Milton, uh, author of such poems as Paradise Loss and The Divine Comedy, in his 1628 Latin poem, Prolusion Six, in which he mocked his fellow Cambridge students, um, 
he, in reference to certain Irish birds, which I thought was odd, he, I'm sorry, I'm just going to stop here and say I wanted to give more proof that this was a thing. And I wrote a lot about how these people reference sticking eels up horses' asses. And I think I got a little too excited for this. <laughs> <laughs> did you think um, we would think that you made this whole practice up if you didn't i don't know maybe like you're some sort of mad scientist in your office when you when no one's looking he's like instead well, of doing actual research i think you know what if i shoved an eel up a horse's ass what would happen maybe not a horse's ass maybe yours that comes later anyway essentially john milton author of Paradise Lost you know, and Divine the farmer. Comedy. Yeah. Yes. He wrote about shoving eels up horses' asses. Mm -hmm. Another poet, Edward Ward, I recounted his poem. Essentially, that is it. Uh, I do uh, want to quote... The, is the Edward Ward poem bullshit? It's true, which I found Oh, it's just poorly hilarious. written. Okay. Uh, there is one more source that I'm just going to quote. Uh, a Francis Groves, in his 1785 classic dictionary of the vulgar tongue... Uh, defines fagging as to put ginger up a horse's fundament and formally, as it is said, a live eel to make him lively and carry his tail well. Uh, is the first part of that also something that you pulled off of, uh, you know, commonlexicon.com or... No, that is... Im uh, improper idiom. No, that is... that is gin No, that is all true. I do ginger like up fundament. something. Yes. Mm -hmm. Fundament. Uh -huh. Which that's the o literally the only reason why I included that source. It's fundamental. Anyway, as we can tell from the above literary references, reference reference reference, I don't know. I'm having a I'm having a stroke. I'm I'm sorry. Take a, but, take a deep breath, big boy. I know I, I assaulted you on all fronts at the start getting, of the show, so I I know I, I was so, you up. I'm so excited for this topic, especially the latter half. But I have to get through all this pre preamble. Okay. Okay. So. As we can tell from the earlier reference, which mentioned putting ginger up a horse's fundament, mm -hmm. um, we evolved as a civilization from putting live eels up the horse's ass to sticking ginger roots in there. And that is still a practice that's kind of done to this day. Uh, other possible irritants include cayenne pepper, turpentine, kerosene, onion, and tobacco. But typically... Ginger root was the common culprit. Uh, this is, I don't know if anyone has heard the phrase to ginger up a horse. Because that no. apparently, a, according to the source, I one don't of think that's real. Sources, that is a real source, and you can call bullshit, it is true. Ginger up a horse is a phrase. Apparently, it's common. Okay. But that comes from this period. How about kerosene? Kerosene is true. Apparently, you just put gasoline up. Up a horse's ass. It, that's why it's called, called horse like, power. Yeah. Indeed. How how are these horses able to survive after this? Is the point that you essentially just send them to their doom by just shoving random stuff up their ass? In this economy, nonetheless. Well, in this economy, you got to do whatever you can afford. And some people can afford ginger. Other people put cayenne pepper. Other people put kerosene. So, but the point of this is that you're attempting to sell a horse that is otherwise underperforming by further crippling it with all of these other things. Well, yeah, I mean, once you sell the horse, it's sold. It's not like it has a, you know, 30 day money back guarantee. <laughs> I mean, it does where I come from. Oh, well, not in the 1600s, starting, especially if I'm you are a used car salesman. I was going to say, yeah, the show. Yeah, got it. Thank you. Were they really using cayenne, though, in the 1600s, or is that more modern? This is more modern. Okay. Yes. Uh, this section I called the horse suppository arms race. <laughs> Suppository, sorry. I um, love that he has all of these headings in his show notes, and then he doesn't always share them. So this is really just to crack himself up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. True. It's literally, you know what? It's literally for myself. It's kind of fucking adorable, really. <laughs> uh, previous ones, uh, you put what in there and stick it up your arse. So, again, some of them are useful, some of them are not. Um, but just to answer your question, Courtney, about cayenne pepper in uh, the 1600s, uh, in case you thought this has gone out of vogue, uh, it still occurs to this day in horse shows. Um, 
forward-thinking uh, shows in Europe and Africa have outlawed it outright, but it is still legal in the good old U.S. of A., even if it is discouraged. Yeah, there's a lot of farmers that are very eager to put things up animals' asses uh, on the regular, mm -hmm. and they don't want to be regulated for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> the government can't tell me what I can stick up a horse's ass. Better not. Only God can tell me. Fight. Words. Yeah. Nor how many buckets I have to stand on to do it. <laughs> In places where it is outright illegal, uh, shows will actually recruit veterinarians to perform random ginger tests where they will swab the rectal and vaginal areas. Yes, people will use the vagina for mares because the irritant will stick around longer when used there. For extra facts there. Um, these swabs Thanks. are then... Yes. Thanks just, for just the Just so facts, everyone can Michael. get that beautiful image in their head. Mm -hmm. Yes. These swabs are then sent to an independent lab where they will test for ginger or other irritants. That's bullshit. They do not do ginger tests that way. <laughs> they do do t ginger testing in places where this is outright legal, which is a lot of places, except for it USA. Like oh, my God. The That's next time you had to go like... get a COVID swab, you just stick it in your butt instead and stick yeah. it in and be like, can you Same just let me good. know? Yeah. No, because it, it is still it is still a thing. Um, whenever people are trying to like <sighs> horse shows are still a big deal there. I, I kept getting a lot of ideas or not ideas phrasing. I kept getting a lot of similar thoughts to dog shows and how a lot of people will have different breeds and show them off and then try and sell them based off of, you know, for studying purposes and stuff like that. And so what better way to make your horse look the best of its show by having it carry its tail very high because a lot of horse shows say that that is a very important aspect. It shows how well bred they are. Pun intended. Uh, I guess this isn't. This is me going off the uh, off the cuff here. I can but, tell. Uh, yeah, because it's it's not as eloquent, <laughs> uh, which is saying a lot. Because I'm never eloquent, but uh, yeah, it's still a big deal. I I read there were a couple of articles that talked about how this. Yeah. Anyway, now that we got this unfortunately terrible. Uh, preliminary stuff out of the way. I mean, depending upon what you, their kinks is, some of them may enjoy it. We don't know. Speaking of know. kinks. No horseplay. It's time we cover the true topic of this episode. No. I knew it was Y'all know about the sexual practice of figging? Not hungry. This is now the, the eighth way that you've said some derivation <laughs> no, of no, no, no. This, this is word. a different word. It's different. It's different. It's figging. Like figgy pudding. <laughs> But I, figging. I have not heard about figging. What is figging? <sighs> it is the BDSM practice of taking skinned ginger root, carving it into a butt plug, and then putting it up your ass or vagina. This did... I feel like for some reason, when you say vagina, it sounds more crude than if you said it a different way. I don't know. Vaginal just... cavity? Do you want me to say it like that? Please, no. <laughs> I'm a... Also, I'm calling bullshit on figging. No, it's true. And and also that is what part of this episode is about. So How many parts are there because This is the main mostly main and topic of mostly. this episode. What was okay. your what, what oh, We God. delve back it's every cause a cause a wheel. That's how all many subheadings say. are there? What's the title of this heading? Yeah. <laughs> um Rule 34 is always true always. So that's 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 all I will say. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. There's some things about it being used in the past as a form of torture. I don't want to get into that. Well, I feel like um, you're torturing Shane right now. Exactly. <laughs> so anyway, speaking of the title, uh, like most things in our reality, someone looked at the idea of taking ginger root and using it as butt plug and said, I think I can get off on this. Um, while usually involving the anus, it can also be done to, why did I write vag? <laughs> it can also be done to your vagina. And in some cases, people have tried urethral sounding. Bullshit. True. With raw peeled ginger. Fuck me. What? Why are human <laughs> beings so depraved? And I'm saying this. So <laughs> you know, that's just the, the, uh. So, you know, like, as, 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 
Shane, since you are very interested in knowing how people tick, and that's why you read a lot into murder mysteries and and that's you may thing, have disabused I, me of that notion. <laughs> I am also semi interested in that sort of idea, but not in what drives people to murder, but what drives people to get off. Because <laughs> just the utter depravity that some people will go to just to get off is so almost fascinating it's 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 so bizarre that mm. i can't help but be fascinated by it you're Indeed. so welcome michael so let's see here that was a lot yeah. of kink shaming there michael that was a lot of kink shaming. I, it very is I, I mean honestly i'm i'm a simple man that's all i'll say well it was um, bold of but... you considering your kink is clearly hurting shane and you're getting off right now i am very much getting off and <laughs> Hands in front. Hands. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Um. Well, now we don't so, know where his hands are at all. All. Do you ever really? You. <laughs> and because nothing is original, what was good for a horse is good for a human. Other materials used in figging <laughs> include hot peppers, cinnamon, garlic, Tabasco sauce, and even peppermint oil. Uh, hell, is garlic bullshit? E- no, it's true. Uh, you can even dust your genitals with ground ginger powder if you're adventurous enough. I, I mean, I that's how I serve it after sushi. And how? <laughs> Spicy. It's palate Speaking- cleanser. <laughs> there you <laughs> Speaking of adventurous, you can increase the burning sensation by clenching them cheeks, my words, Either voluntarily or by caning slash spanking. Or you can do what the Victorians might have done, allegedly, and use a riding crop. Michael, is this the naughty part of the episode? This this whole episode is the <laughs> naughty episode. <laughs> naughty! <laughs> You're killing Courtney now. Look at you getting off. Oh, this is... I, I'm enjoying this immensely. I'm sorry, but I'm enjoying this. I'm scared. Clenching <laughs> clenching heightens uh. the burning sensation, which was discovered by said frisky Victorian husbands who are heavily documented by the smut from the era as enjoying dominating their wives by riding them as horses, complete with the ginger butt plug and using riding crops. Is that not bullshit? <sighs> it is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Your like mind, most of the your shit. mind came up with that. I just want oh. you to look at that information. <laughs> well, so what do you what? like? Most of the kinky shit Victorians <laughs> used to do, it stayed in the bedroom and far away from prying eyes and books. If this sort of thing did occur back then, it was certainly not mentioned. Uh, one website that one source <laughs> that is linked in 2012, figging.com, which is an actual website that I use in the show of course notes, it was. quoted. <sighs> Quoted, an ac- it, quoted a different website as proof this occurred, but that link is broken. Uh, so instead of saying that it might have been true, I decided to just make it a lie instead of a rumored exaggeration. Oh, dear God, it does exist. <sighs> I, oh, yeah. Well, I, I'm not kidding. I was it not is, in incognito mode for that one. Uh, someone is looking have for a fun virus. fun with oh. all those ads. Awesome. <sighs> And just when you thought it could get worse, a I'm medical. Just, oh, sorry. Oh no, I'm just agog at the fact that John is is spot on with the lies here. It's almost as though the two of you are hardwired the same way. He's like, I know the depravity humanity gets into, <laughs> and this is too much, man. This is it goes too far. Hey, we've all seen beheading videos. That's fine. <laughs> I I I'm I'm glad he didn't call bullshit on the urethral sounding because he already knew that that was true. Yeah, I knew that was true. Um, unfortunately. A Gingerly. medical a medical live journal blog from 2007 recommended a more extreme, or in their words, advanced form of figging, which involved fermenting the carved ginger root in a plastic bag in the refrigerator for several Get days. Fucked. The blog even mentions. If the skin of the ginger is discolored or has mold spots on it, don't worry. That's perfectly normal. Um, considering this came from a medical blog, I believe it's veracity, but I am not a doctor in any sense of the word, and so Nor take that you as you be. will. <laughs> True that. True is big, yeah. 
Uh, I am not sorry for the Gary Heidnick episode anymore. I'm just no, gonna you, you shouldn't be. <laughs> any you shouldn't be. I, I feel ever like Michael gave. really. I took that as a challenge. You really undersold your trigger. Yeah, I probably yeah, that's true. Um, I do want to note though that all the sources included for the act of figging mention to wash your hands after prepping the ginger root. Well, I mean, they always do give you that glorious alcohol swab before a lethal injection, too, because they don't want to get that last-minute infection. Is that true? Obviously. Huh. We're not on a show where we lie or anything. That's why I had to ask. I'll never tell. You can... (laughs) You can get ginger oil all over your naughty bits, but Satan forbid you get some oil in your eyes, you know, because you're rubbing your eyes or whatever. Because Ka is a wheel. It's mm-hmm. time we go full circle and come back to eels. More like Kaka is a wheel. Ugh. In 2013, a 39 year old man from the, I'm, I'm not going to pronounce this correct, the Guangdong province in China, checked into a nearby hospital for medical assistance. His mm-hmm. reason? He told mm-hmm. the medics, please, please help me. The eel is moving through my body. No. Oh. A team of surgeons spent hours removing the 20-inch Asian swamp eel from his rectum, (sighs) and it damn damn near near killed him. him. Yes, yes. Was this written in written in there? (laughs) Was this individual Richard Gear? I'm so proud of you. (laughs) Maybe (laughs) the Eddie Dean of our particular quartet here is officially just uh, righteously (laughs) thrilled by your presentation, my friend. (laughs) You're doing terrific. The man had massive internal bleeding, but ultimately survived, unlike the poor eel. Oh. The eel, weighing little more than a pound, died shortly after extraction. But what led the man to (laughs) shove that eel up his ass? It was Agent Smith. Your father. Well, he was watching an X-rated movie, uh, one that probably didn't start with, don't try this at home. And he thought to himself, well... I'm going to try this at home. <laughs> he was, and, and this is in the, the, the source that, is, that I'm referencing. He Got was him. holding on to the eel while he was trying this whole procedure, making sure not to let go. But wouldn't you know it? The man lost his grip on that slippery fuck. And up it went. <laughs> Michael, did he give it a name? Uh, the name of the section is Ka is a Wheel. Because no, I, did he I was name surprised. the eel? Um, no. What do you want to name the eel? Since you asked. What do you want to name it, Courtney? I think fuck you, John, (laughs) seems to be what she's mouthing. I can't (laughs) tell. Now, out of all the cases I'm about to list. I would name it Little John. Sick. Timothy, for short. Yeah, yeah. This guy and only one other were the only honest ones out of the bunch. Most reasons for putting an eel up the rectum involved treating constipation. Mm-hmm. citing a folk remedy um i don't know about you but if i have trouble going to the bathroom it wouldn't occur to me to shove something up there in the home set in the hopes that it will loosen everything up oh you've never been treated with a speculum before uh no i haven't and not hungry thanks <laughs> not hungry uh, howie either but not definitely not hungry howie uh the earliest case i could find occurred in 20 or t- i'm sorry 2003 because when we went into this recent most recent decade everyone called it 2010 instead of 2000 um in 2003 from the medical journal surgery uh in in the title traumatic rectal preparation by an eel name of the um, paper uh, a 50 year old man from somewhere in china i i say somewhere because i couldn't access the actual paper uh even with my university privilege before you Mm -hmm. critique probably because it's bullshit uh, no, it is true. <laughs> it is true. Uh, this man checked into a hospital complaining of a, a abdominal pain. It was revealed he had a peri- peritonitis, essentially an infection of the abdominal membrane, which covers all your guts. Uh, the eel was about a foot and a half long uh, and bit an inch-sized hole in the guy's rectum. Uh I got, because I saw 
captions and stuff from the paper, but I didn't get to read the paper itself. Uh, I got to see the images that accompany the paper's abstract, and that was disgusting. Not um, my proudest, Fab. Uh, <laughs> most certainly not. And you know he But not did. my last one. Yeah. He tore that ass up. <sighs> that he did. Um, that was little John Jr., by the way. Mm. Uh, in the latest case I could find from July of this year, 2021, a man from China's Wangzhou province inserted an eight inch long eel up his ass, um, but suffered through a whole day of discomfort um, because he was too, quote, shy to see the doctor. He was just too dang embarrassed oh. to go see a doctor for an eel up his ass. First time. <laughs> um let's see here a 59 year old chef was taken to a, a sichuan hospital um creators of the uh, sichuan sauce so it was sichuan not not sichuan sorry <laughs> uh, a sichuan hospital with abdominal pain dehydration and a lot of anal bleeding um friday mystified night. <laughs> yeah, sounds like an average Friday night to me. Um, mystified doctors opened him out up and found a dead foot and a half long Asian swamp eel in there. Uh, the chef claimed he ate a lot of eel the day prior, but other than that, he claimed he had no idea how or why an eel would end up there. Uh, unfortunately, though, after 10 days, the uh, chef succumbed to his injuries. Um, and to put even more salt on the wound or wounds in his case, it was later found that he had nothing to do with the eel up his ass. It turns out the day before he and his friends got really drunk and he passed out instead of doing sensible things like drawing dicks on his face or placing his hand in warm water to make him piss himself. His friends thought it would be quote amusing. Uh, to stick a live eel up his ass while he was out cold for all the men in the room in 2011 in china again a man had an eel removed from his bladder having entered through the man's penis that's gonna an, be a uh, very small eel or a real big dick Por qué no los dos? uh it didn't specify the size so i'm guessing a small eel are you sure it was an, an eel and not a penis fish because that's a real thing I have heard of that, and that's honestly what caused me to write add this case to the episode, because that does occur. Um, in an expected twist of events, the man was trying to treat his urination problems uh, that were caused by his enlarged prostate. <laughs> so, what better way? You know, if people are treating for constipation, stick a needle up the ass, you know, I, I, I'm having trouble going to the bathroom, stick a needle up there. I know an old lady who swallowed a fly, but I don't remember this being added to the rhyme. <laughs> uh, in New Zealand in 2012, someone had stuck an eel the size of a sprig of asparagus, to quote the source, uh, up his ass. Standard stuff, based off of all the other cases we've had. What wasn't standard were the 33 or more ho hospital staff who accessed the man's x-rays and emailed the pictures around the hospital like you gotta see this shit sort of thing uh the staff were investigated and some were even filed or fired filed some were even fired when the pictures were leaked to the press uh the reason there's any number of hipaa laws being violated here i uh, it... and that's why a lot of them were fired when they're like <laughs> here you guys go um so and and I didn't write this in the episode, but um, the reason why a lot of these cases are out of China is because the way that um, reporting goes. Uh, so uh, how reporting goes in China for like medical cases is people can actually write papers on um, people that are treated in hospitals and actually publish them. Uh, and then um, newspapers or media outlets get access to these things. So it's not that like it's a big deal occurring in China. It's just that because of how china's reporting laws are uh and how publishing laws are also in there there when something happens like this it can go it can make the media rounds as opposed to patient confidentiality in other countries like america um or uh, new zealand technically but not in this case 
The reason for the anal allele was not disclosed in, in the uh, couple of articles that I read about it. Uh-huh. So that brings our exploration of eels to a close. I didn't even know that's what we were going to be doing. Well, I did preface the beginning of the episode by saying I'm titling this episode Figging or How I Stopped or how I learned to stop worrying we, and love the eel. We we know. So, I feel the I eel? have a better I eel. I have a better appreciation for eels and all they do for us as a civilization. What do you guys think? And that that is how I ended this episode. Well, I eel good. No 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 no. I eel good. So. <sighs> Yeah. Have you tried have you tried practicing? No. I have not tried fig- figging, gingering, whatever they call eeling, none of that. Um I Are you I, going I to? didn't want to get, you know, that involved in this topic. Were you scared well, that you'd like it too much? Partially, yeah. Well, now that you've admitted that, I, I think we all can finally start to eel. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Time does eel all wounds. Mm-hmm. So, any stabs? Me. Same. Vigorously. Eardrums do not count. Not in the butt either. <laughs> oh, no, I, I assumed you meant so. eardrums at the very least to stop the hearing. So. Michael, were the guy's friends charged with murder? Yes. In the case of, okay. As far cool. as I'm aware, it was an, um, it was an open case. There was a case being like brought against them. I don't know. I as of recording, it wasn't decided yet. They were still in legal proceedings, but yes, they were certainly arrested and brought to trial Ugh, for a terrible prank gone even worse. Well, it's good to know. I won't be mailing you any eels. Yeah, I appreciate that. So, stabs. Any? I, I took mine. Okay. That's fair. <laughs> yeah, John killed it. You did, honestly. <laughs> yeah, pat yourself on the back, John. You did a you did a pretty good job. Lies. Okay. <laughs> so the first one, there are only two native eels to England. The electric eel is not one of them. Uh it as far as I'm aware, uh, and if you find if someone finds if you listeners find extra evidence, link it in the comments, sure. Um, they don't use electric eels for, for this sort of thing. Cool, cool. We're, we're giving snaps to John for that one. <sighs> True that. Snap away. Um, I kind of skipped over it, but I did mention it a couple times. I mentioned John Milton, author of uh, Paradise Lost and the Divine Comedy. Uh, he didn't write the Divine Comedy. Um, yeah. It was written by some Italian that I'm going to butcher his name, Dante Ali, uh, Ali, Ali Gary? Mm-hmm. Did I get it? No, okay. but you know, I, I just wanted you to stop trying. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, it, and the Divine Comedy was published some 300 years before John Milton was even a thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mentioned, and you guys took the bait, and I was proud of it, uh, forward-thinking shows in Europe and Africa have outlawed it uh, outright, but it is still legal in the good old U.S. of A., even if it is discouraged. It's definitely illegal everywhere, um, though some shows are somewhat more lax than others, as in they don't do ginger tests, which is true. Mm. But Wouldn't that make uh, them more ex-lax? Well, I don't think it really has a laxative component to it. Um, <laughs> it it's not like they're trying to treat constipation in the horses with these eels. There's no folk remedy for that as far as I'm aware. It'd be a lot cooler if they did. It would be. It would be a lot cooler. Uh, let's see, you caught the frisky Victorian husbands who rode their wives like horses and used riding crops. Um, like I already said, uh, if they did do that, they kept it to themselves and didn't write about it. Uh, the next lie, I wrote that a medical live journal from 2007 recommended uh, a more extreme or advanced version of figging. Um, it was not a medical blog. Definitely not. And I'm repeating that. Uh, Again, I am not a doctor, so don't take what you hear as medical fact. Do your own independent research with trusted sources and not your mildly racist family members on Facebook. Get him, Dad. (sighs) Exactly. Okay. And then the last... Oh, no. Don't start that shit again. 
Okay. Mm. So okay. the last lie, uh, in an expected twist, the man was trying to treat his urination problems uh, that were caused by his enlarged prostate. Uh, the man claimed that he was swimming with eels at the time to cleanse his skin. And just one just happened to whoop, swim up there. You know, a random random event. Yeah, I, no I had no, no idea. He's, oh, oh it, it's in there. Oh, well. Well, no one expects the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> I'm just picturing this eel <laughs> dress like <laughs> All red and stuff. Ha-ha. But yeah, so that was, uh, that was my episode. On on eels, and what to what not to do with them. Jesus was just born, Michael. <laughs> Sweet baby Jesus. And what better way to celebrate than putting eels up things? Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, not the eels. <laughs> ah! <sighs> I, could, I I had a really fun, cute episode for today, but it's fine. It's fine. Too bad. I guess it could be a good palate cleanser for next week, and for the next year. I don't think I'll be here next week. Same. <sighs> Oof. Yeah, this was the last episode, I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great way to go out. It's like shit flopping out of an ass, following an eel. They're so wiggly. Yeah. So, um... <laughs> At least they come pre-lubricated. That is very true. Mm-hmm. Very important to note. Uh, so, based off of that, based off of this episode i feel like it is a very uh important uh time to ask how is everyone doing in the famed words of uh poet thespian bob dylan i'd like to say how does it eel how does it eel to be on Something your own like that right yeah like a complete unknown like a kidney stone true words michael how are you doing um i'm pretty giddy I was actually really excited to present this because I just wanted to see all your disgusted faces. You do look like you've been recharged. I I feel a brand new man. I feel like it looks like your social meter has been replenished. Like my constipation has been cured by shoving an eel up my ass. Mm -hmm. (sighs) Goodness gracious. And I admit it. Shane, hopefully by the time this episode comes out, we've heard the first mix of our new single. Indeed, yes. <laughs> I'm I'm just hearkening back to the old Klingon proverb that says that uh, revenge is a dish best served cold. So I'll be remembering this episode, and I assure you, you're going to rue the day that you decided to fuck with everybody, including the horses. Yeah. <laughs> you sick son of a bitch. I'm excited. Oh, Hashtag cancel me, daddy. Anywho. <laughs> I suppose, ladies and ginger phobes, it is lovely <laughs> to have you here for the holiday installment <laughs> of this ridiculous fucking show. <laughs> what hath we wrought? Yeah. What will we wrought onto each other? Indeed. I'm letting someone else handle the outro today. I'm I'm I give up. I'm I'm done with this shit. <laughs> <laughs> so uh there's some links uh in, in the show notes. Um, you know, click them. Don't look at them. It, no one gives a engage. fuck. Engage. Uh um um uh, tell your friends, neighbors, passerbys, random strangers, tell them about our podcast. Um not after this. Uh, d- don't tell them about this episode. Just tell them about not today, Satan. Tell them about all the <laughs> other uh, hundred and twenty some odd episodes. But uh, tell them to ignore this one. Yeah, you won't do it. And then tell us in in the comments by leaving a, a like, subscribe, uh, hit reviews, um, um, all those other things. Spotify actually does have a ranking now on their thing that you can give. So if you do like us, you can you know give us one star on there because that's the lowest amount that you could give. Um, outside of just not doing it in general, in which case the the program has not changed. So I'll take one star over no stars. One is I greater think, than zero. I think eels eels up the ass is at least 0.5 of a star just because you knew it's a thing. Yeah. And now, now everyone does. That at, now you can say that at parties. The, the and maybe you know. if we get enough rankings, we can dare John to put an eel up his ass because he'll do anything on a dare. That is true. Or for money. Or for money. Yeah. So uh, we'll start a Patreon, and we get we get two subscribers, uh, and uh, John will put uh, an eel up his ass. That's what the man said. <laughs> <laughs> 
Shame. They don't even have to, to donate anything. <laughs> we'll just set the the lowest down. Uh, the lowest. Um, <clears throat> oh my god! Donation. Just make it stop for the disinformed podcast this week. I'm Shane. I am John. I'm Michael. I was Courtney. Zippity poop. Let's get the fuck gone. <laughs>